homemade lemonade. Carpets. One for a fiver. Three for a tenner. Take it. Take it. <laughs> That's like inside the drunk man's head when he leaves the pub at night at two in the morning. The blue, blue. <laughs> Thank you. Beeswax candles. Yeah. Soy wax ones, all the others are just pure soy wax. They burn for about 15 hours plus. That will okay. improve the warmth because the beeswax burns the longest of all the waxes. Oh, this one. Wow, that smells really nice. Yeah. I know, do you know, because if you just do citronella on its own, it's a bit. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> intense, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. not as effective, it really isn't. Whereas okay. if you do them, because a lot of the, you know, different flies don't like different things, so yeah. that covers more. Yeah. yeah, really good though. I called it buzz off, but people are getting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there is a couple of mushrooms in the box, all right? Just if you need to get them off. The rest of these are Yeah, perfect. Thanks very much. It was really nice. Thank you. Some light fabric for the summer. So now you guys just have a, had a peak of the market. In Bantry, no. and um, so this market is on in the summertime every Friday morning. And one lady said it actually doesn't really stop; it stops whenever the, the bad weather turns in, I guess. And um, yeah, so there's food, there's clothes, there's handmade soaps and jewelries, there's everything you can find. And at the beginning of the market, actually, there's even tools and toys and all sorts of things. It's really nice. And the location is beautiful and it's a gorgeous day here. Um, so yeah, come in Bantry on a Friday morning. This is our evening walk, isn't it, Carl? Yeah. What are we doing now? Yeah, I swim off here. And what do you got in your hand? Some apple. For who? For us. For us? Oh, for the donkeys, is it? Yeah. yeah I, I thought I was getting fed. <laughs> you guys look at this view. Sun setting down, the tide is up. 
walking down what seems to be a private lane, but it's not. It is not a private lane, even though there's grass growing in the middle. But would you look at this view though? Can you ever get sick of this? Look at this tan face, looking at the sun. Here, this is a, our little beach down the, the lane that we have here. But today we've decided we're gonna go jump off the pier. So this is our last night. And on our last night, instead of just going down for a swim here, we're going for a big swim, big boy swim. Kind of too much time around, Jamie. <laughs> too much time around our nephew. Keeps us young at heart, doesn't it? Sure it does. Sure does. I love this feeling. I know you guys can't smell it through the camera, but it smells like fresh sea air. Not fishy, just fresh sea. Ooh, the sun. What an evening though. So I decided not to go for a swim, but uh, this guy enjoyed it. Tell us about it, Cal. Woo! It was amazing. Look at the sun. There's water. Yeah, there was a bit of like red algae and some jellies floating around, but... You scared them all away as you jumped in. Well, the sun is... It's not even cold. It's so refreshing. Like, it's refreshed, but it's not like... You don't feel the cold. This ginger beard keeps me warm. That was Colin and Ariel reporting from Bentry Bay, Ajaquista. Our last night here. What do you got to say, Cal? Slancha. Slancha. So that was the pub just behind me there that um, serves food and alcohol. We had a great time there. And then um, the other pub, it's called a tin pub. They had tin the tin shed. No, it's a tin pub. Is it tin pub or yeah, tin no. shed pub? No. Anyways, it's the tin pub, I'm pretty sure. Colin says it's a tin shed. It's one or the other. But um, they had live music last night uh, that you're going to see in a minute or that you have seen already. I don't know how I'm going to do this video, but somehow you will see that. And it was an American band playing Irish rock Irish traditional music. And it really lifted up the mood in the pub last night and it was really nice so um shout out to these guys they're called the crack house the crack house so c-r-a-i-c -C before any of you get i'll uh, write it down in the here in the description below as well so yeah it was really nice and we will be following along see if we can catch up with these guys again and see them somewhere else maybe in the world it was lovely lovely time and amazing music great people as well so we had lots of fun we recommend going to the tin shed even if there's no live music because it was good ambiance the owners are very nice and lovely and welcoming good service good beer so yeah got anything to add Carl? no so yeah we're gonna go see the donkeys now because they're out there where are they yeah they are good my apple so these are my favorite animals in the area. Hey, Carl. Take a piece, Carl. Just take one. Hey, there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Aren't we now nice, are we? 
It'll be nice. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? Yeah. I love when he does that. <laughs> Just so gorgeous. All right, we saying goodbye now. You're going to eat my toes. You're a nibble. Please don't nibble on my toes. <laughs> You're funny. You're funny. Oh my gosh. Hey, don't you have to lick my leg now. Oh, look at the two of you. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah. Bye, guys. Where are we, Coco? In Cork City Bay. <laughs> it's nice, all right, though. Hello, everyone. So we have left our lovely little homestay in uh, Bantry, well, in Hakista, near Bantry. And we have just arrived now in Cork City and we are going to do a small walking tour of Cork City and we're probably gonna hit the market, the English market as well. Um, and we'll take you along with us and hopefully discover some touristy area and history sites of Cork City. Anything to add, Carl? Just welcome to Cork City, bye. <laughs> interesting fact of <laughs> newly facts that I'm just learning through our travels is um, the Catholic churches weren't allowed to be built on main roads in Ireland back in the mid 18th century because of well the English presence obviously so um, this church was not built on the main road it was built on back road so um, this is called St. Peter and Paul's Church Catholic Church and they still do mass in Irish and Latin so it's pretty cool I'll give you a look around of uh, the church like here we are he said as well that though there was no spire built on this church because uh, they were fearful that it wouldn't hold its structure so that's the reason why it doesn't have and a lack of funds as well to build it properly thank you Colin for that all right Oh yeah, we turned down there. definitely um, more of an artsy city I would compare it almost to like Melbourne in Australia yeah, that's not bad comparison, actually. or like like Montreal in Canada kind of you know like it's more like the the artist city <laughs> yeah, so true 
every country has one of those. Mm -hmm. You have the business city and you have the artist city. Yeah. And then you have the crazy city sometimes. Yeah, Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto. No, Vancouver. Vancouver is the crazy city. City. Yeah. yeah. It's so true actually, it's a great comparison. Yeah. Now we're on the main street and we're heading towards the English market. To... So I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting the English market to be inside. No. No? I was expecting it to be outside. So no, it's, an old building. it's an old building, is that it? That house that's been for 200, 250 years. I don't know exactly the details. So we're entering the market now from the back alley. So you have all the food counters here. Some nice bread and meat. The cheese. Some tourist jerseys. Yeah, it is nice. It's like a texture, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> cork, not cork. <laughs> Love it. There's like cafes and restaurants upstairs. You have an upstairs area, yeah. Really nice, isn't it? Sauce. Sauce is the choice. Dublin hot sauce. Is it? Uh, that's you. Sweet and hot like me. <laughs> that's you. Look. Hey. Hot head. That's you. <laughs> yes. I just wetter you. <laughs> because in the 1700s, the late 1700s, there would have been an Irish market on uh, St. Paul and Peter's Church, uh, well, St. Paul and Peter's Square, which is near the church that we just visited. So that was called the Irish market, which they would have sold more so Irish food. And then this market was the English market. And it's been a market since the years of 17. 58, I believe it is. I don't know if they have like shows of lights or anything going on, but the nightlife in Cork must be surreal. Yeah. yeah. fit to walk and cork. Yeah, not as bad. Established in 1626.
This is the entrance now mm -hmm. of Elizabeth Fort, mm -hmm. the Fort Elizabeth. And we are going to go to the wall. We're going to follow these people, apparently. Oh, look at that. <gasps> go in, Colin. Here. <laughs> come on, come on, put your head in. No, wait, it's because your head is not in. There we go. No. Hold on, yes, I want to take a little video. No, come on, in. yes, a little bit. You'll be fine. Put your hand in. You'll be fine now. Oh no! We gotta cut your head. <laughs> oh no, okay, I'll leave you here now. Bye bye. Bye, Coco. Oh, you cheeky little bugger. <laughs> oh, careful so you don't drop it on your hand. Here. <laughs> now, that would have been a lot tighter back in the days, let me tell you. Map of Cork City in 1602. Where the fort was built. 17th century was a turbulent and significant century in the history of both Cork City and Ireland. It saw the re-establishment of the power of the English crown over Ireland and as a result the decline of the old Gaelic civilization. Star-shaped forts in County Cork were built at the Hobeline, Hall Hall Line, Camden Fort, Carlisle Fort and Kinsale during the 17th century by the English forces. This was part of a defense strategy for Cork City, Har City, Cork City and Harbour, which by that stage had established itself as a wealthy trade center and strategic center in the communication lines with Europe. Elizabeth Fort was built during a period which, was, which is regarded as a watershed in Irish history. Two significant events at this time were defeat at this time were the defeat of the Irish and Spanish forces at the Battle of Kinsale in County Cork in 1601 and the fight of the Earls in 1607. The siege of Cork was a result of a dispute over the throne of England between Catholic King James II of England and Protestant William of Orange, ruler of Holland. The citizens of Cork rallied behind James II, a movement that became known as the Jacobite cause. The result was that a Williamite army under the leadership of the Duke of Marlborough was dispatched to Cork to reign the city for William. Cork City was particularly indefensible against attack due to its location on low-lying ground overlooked by high ground to the north and south. Roger McElliot, commander of garrison in Cork, had been advised by Jacobite generals to burn the city of Cork and retreat to Kerry. Marlborough escaped his forces in vicinity of the Loch, south of Elizabeth Fort. A detachment was sent under the command of Lieutenant General Scaravamore to attack from the north side of the Lee, while Marlborough forces attacked from the south. On the 28th of September 19, uh, sorry, 1690, the Williamite army attacked from both sides of the river, supported by their artillery and warships, which had sailed up from the river and joined in the bombardment. Realising that the situation was hopeless, McElliot, after some negotiations, agreed to hand over Elizabeth Fort immediately and to, and to surrender the city on the following day. Marlborough agreed to treat the garrison as prisoners of war and to show clemency to the inhabitants of the city. The siege of Cork was over. Its walls, which had stood for centuries, were destroyed, being obsolete against their new weapons of war. In 1698, barracks for the English troops were built near the fort on the opposite side of the Barrack Street. In 1719, a new barracks was constructed within the fort itself. Wow. Pew pew! hot here, isn't it? It's nice and quiet though. I can't get over the rooftops. Just like, look at those. 
chunks of houses there. It's nice though, isn't it? The lads fishing. Do you see them? Oh, so it's a museum. Jail cells. Luxury. Full, please. Full, please. Ah! <laughs> no, it's okay. Coco. Coco. I love you. I know you did. So that was Queen Elizabeth first. And the fort is named in her honor. But she, yeah, she died two years after it was built. Turn the lights off for everyone inside. So welcome now to St. Finn Bears Cathedral. St. Finn Bears Cathedral is a church of Ireland Cathedral with roots that date to the 7th century AD. So the first building on that site was a monastery that was founded in the Fibar of Cork. It was then destroyed in the 12th century during the Norman invasion of Ireland. There was two more churches that were built on the site, but they were each demolished and replaced by new larger structures. The existing cathedral was built between 1863 and 1879, and it was designed by a, an architect that had particular um, achievement goals in mind. So when he built this cathedral, he knew this was going to be a project of long term. Uh, Burgess, William Burgess, was worried that the cathedral wouldn't be finished in his lifetime. So he decided to create a book of furniture and a book of designs so that the cathedral would be completed to what his specifications were. And these books have been used during the reconstruction efforts to ensure that it remains true to the original version, well, the original vision that the architect had. So who are they all? Now tell me. You For studied the, the map? The apostle? Yeah. You studied the map now. Who, who are they all? Tell Can me. Study any map. You I was more so looking at the animals. There's oh, like an yeah. ox and a lion. Yeah, a horse uh, here. An eagle and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And also the interior um, it's just as impressive as the exterior. Just hold on a second when you see it here. Um, it has mosaic pavements, high marble nave, and large columns. And the pulpit is cylindrical and it's perched on four sculpted legs. The brass lectern shows the lead, the head of Moses and King David. There's also 75, no, 74 stained glass windows.
and um, on top of the 74 glass windows, there is also a pipe organ that was built in 1870 by William Hill and Sons, and it has more than 4,500 pipes. So that says something. So as part of our little city tour, we uh, we didn't have to, but we made it. Uh, we made a little stop at a pub called the Rising That's Suns right. Beer, and it's something Colin really wanted to check out because Cork has amazing brewing, little small brewing companies that are really worth checking out. So we just had to taste a few beers in their uh, in their place. So what you can actually see here behind the bar, they make the beer actually just behind it. And then we're just having a quick look at the beer menu here. So there's a, a lager, an Irish stout, pale ale, an ember, another pale ale, a session pale ale, um, a red ale. And then anyways, there's a few good things, but I was really liking their beer choices that they had. I thought it was a good beer. And now I'm just walking around the grounds of the university. So I'm gonna show you a bit of the University of Cork, which is known to have had the first two women to graduate in medicine in Ireland in, I believe it was 1898. The University of Cork was also known or has been nominated as one of the best institution of technology uh, for the European Union or something like that. Don't quote me on this now. <laughs> I read this somewhere, but um, the architecture here is unreal. I'll just give you a look at it in a minute. So when you come in, you come in through these doors you can go up here. And then that's on one of the entrances. What a nice castle tower. Here, let's back up a bit. Yeah, it's a better shot actually. True uh, Harry Potter style. And those here are clearly like newer buildings. And uh, well, I guess they have like the tents out and everything because they're probably doing tours of the university to the new students. Now this is the inside of where we were just at earlier on the outside. So like this is like the inside of the courtyard kind of. Isn't it gorgeous? So yeah, I wasn't too far off when I said that it was named one of the top university. It was named of the one of the top um, <laughs> perfer performing. So one of the top performing university. It was named that by the European Commission. So I guess it would have been amongst European University. But um, yeah, it's a pretty good name for this university. Um, so yeah, that's that. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. But yeah, it's just really lovely grounds, a really lovely area. And by the amount of chimneys 
that there is everywhere on the rooftops. You can only guess that these rooms are really hard to keep warm in the winter. So that's that too. <laughs> there's much over there it's just a library it doesn't look overly nice so we're not gonna go since Colin is waiting for us and the old slate on the rooftop the rooftops are very pointy it's a gorgeous building This is the entrance of the Cork City Gale. The workers are coming out. It's really nice, isn't it? All right, let's walk around the corner. Unfortunately, we arrived here too late to be able to see the inside of the museum. Honestly, I didn't really see the time pass. And by the time we got out of the city center, we went to the university and I didn't think that it was going to take us that long, really. Yeah, and um, yeah. we just made it here at 5.00, like it's 5 on the clock. And the museum closes at 5. So we're not able to go inside the museum, unfortunately. But um, we're hoping to have a peek from the corner because when we drove past the corner here, we could see kind of the inside of the tower. So I'm hoping we'll be able to see a little bit. but. We don't know. All right, you come in color, you stay in here. It's a tall wall though, isn't it? It is a very tall wall. Well, you wouldn't want to be able to escape it, I guess. If you did a speech of a... Uh, what was it? What were the pity crimes people were getting in prison here for? Cursing what is it? And drinking alcohol. Cursing, drinking alcohol. And uh, a woman was arrested for yeah, freedom, for doing a freedom speech. So this is the best view that we're going to get of uh, <laughs> the, prison. the the prison, the Cork Museum prison, unfortunately. We'll come back, Colin. Eh? We'll have to. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah, we were just saying, Colin and I, um, if we ever do happen to come back to Cork City, looking for a place maybe a little bit outside of the city center but still in within bus distance would be key because what we just did now was uh, we parked in the city just a little bit outside the city center but in like a normal parking area and it cost us eight euro for three hours so that's a bit pricey now um so yeah, I would recommend, we would recommend actually that anyone that wants to come to Cork park outside of the city and take the bus or they actually have a yeah, park and ride or they have like places like that you can do or stay outside the city and you don't have to take your car at all. Then that's ideal because it's just a bit expensive to take the, to park your car. So you're better off without driving it and everything in Cork apart from the jail and Fitzgerald Park are like very centered in the city. So it's quite nice. For that um, but yeah hopefully we'll get to come back in Cork and see the inside of this jail museum until then that's us leaving Cork now <laughs> all right you guys so we are now I don't even know I don't even know how many days has passed since we came back from Cork uh, Cork City in Cork West Cork and all but um, yeah a good few days have passed and I just realized when I, was, when I was editing my video just now that I haven't done a proper closing for this cork video. I thought I did, but then looking back at it, I'm like, no, I definitely did it. I just said, bye, we're leaving cork. But uh, <laughs> I didn't give you, I guess like there's not much else to say, but I wanted to thank you guys. If you've watched till the end of this video, I know this was a long one. So thank you very much for watching it till the end. And if you did, just give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. You don't have to subscribe. I mean, if you do, then it just helps me into the YouTube system. But, but just give it a thumbs up if you did watch it till the end 
again and you liked it and leave me a comment and comment below if you'd like um tell me a bit about you if you've traveled before or if you like this video just let me know and um we'll see you in another video thank you again for watching